Now, in the automotive space, I know you have some experience there, but you're also looking forward. And I assume in your company, you're always looking forward so that you can have something to offer the next customer who may have a question or an idea. Where do you see yourself at right now? And what are some things that you're looking forward to? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll mention probably the most forward-looking project that has gone on for the probably five to seven years now since we began this journey uh, with Hyundai. And this is, this is where it started with one of those great what-if questions. And it was a conversation with um, someone in their ventures team. So they've got, you know, big OEs have teams outside of just their day-to-day car studio teams that are looking at different technologies and different innovation and where can we grow and and what are new adjacencies we could get into. And we had already done something in the mass transit market with uh, Hyundai's team because they they make trains. They have a Rotem division that, you know, because Hyundai Motor Global is so big, they, uh, they had questions about mass transit. And this was right around eight years ago when, like, Hyperloop one of the Elon Musk topics, you know, they put out that white paper for Hyperloop and everybody got all crazy. And there's a couple startups that have been trying to figure that out. And Hyundai was like, we make trains. Should we be making a Hyperloop? So we did a project with them. And that's one of the things that our firm has, has been really known for over the decades, which is uh, lots of mass transit. Actually, Summer Farrar did the BART train that's still running in San Francisco, the MARTA. Um, so just my first project was rehashing the interior of the Long Island Railroad. Um, so mass transit has been a big thing. So we started with Hyundai on that project, and that was uh, just a uh, you know eight month project. And then the question came in: What do we do when a car's hit its limit for wheeled suspensions? Like right now, off road cars are great, but they they still only have the limitation of the diameter of that tire. At some point, an off road vehicle gets stuck. What if we didn't get stuck? And I started a conversation about: Well, what if a car could walk? And you're like, okay, I mean, they do in Transformers movies, but could a car really walk? And so that was one of those, whoa, what does that mean? And how would you do that? And of course, then I would immediately go to, does anybody need that? Does anybody need a car that could walk? (laughs) So before we start trying to like invent a robotic leg and it bolted onto the side of a chassis, why would you need that? So that's a project that was super, you know, futuristic and innovative from a like, Blue sky perspective. That's probably one of the biggest blue sky questions we've ever been asked. So, so did, did that go anywhere? Yeah. So so first, it had multiple stages of convincing the you know executives to continue funding this idea. So you had a uh, a team at Hyundai Ventures that said, "Hey, you know, management's kind of curious about this. Let's let's do some due diligence and let's just investigate a need." So that's where we just started a very creative use case need. Well, if you, let's just say you had it. Let's not even try and invent it first. Let's just say, imagine it already existed. Who would need it? Why would they need it? What would the purpose be? How many people would it you know, fit? And we started going through different future trends. So one of them is autonomous taxis. We know we're trying to live longer in, in our homes, right? We have an aging population that wants to be more independent. And, and what good is an autonomous taxi that's sitting down at the end of their driveway and they live in an apartment brownstone and they can't get from their front step to that autonomous taxi just waiting for them? What if a vehicle could come to your house and then actually crawl over your, you know, three steps or four steps and level itself right at your front door and drop a ramp out and you wheel your wheelchair right into that vehicle, you bolt it down and then it crawls down to the street. Now it's on its way. That's an enabling dream. I mean, it sounds blue sky, but think about how meaningful that would be for someone who's living by themselves is, you know, in their seventies, they, they, they can't get down their front steps. Not everybody has an ADA ramp, you know, I mean, we take it for granted in America, it's kind of required, but everybody everywhere in the world is going to be that, you know, enabled for that type of mobility. So that was just one. Then we started thinking, okay, obviously, you know, military would use that. Of course, there's funding there potentially. And then we started thinking about, hey, we're in Michigan. How many times have you seen a car off a ditch in the snowbank on the side of the highway? It actually didn't hit anything. It's completely stuck. But if it could just stand up three feet and crawl its way back to the road, you'd be back on your way. I really like what you had said in that thought process. 
forget about actually inventing it. Let's say that it exists. And how would we be using it today if it existed? I, I've, I've never really thought about that in any of the projects that I had worked on, but I, I love that type of thinking. Um, I, I feel like that could really inspire a lot of infant, uh, innovation. Don't worry about the details. Don't worry about how am I getting there. Let's say it exists today. How am I using it? Well, today? and we needed to that. we needed to establish that first to make the question worth another conversation and more funding. You know, I mean, you got to you got to convince everybody. Yes, there is a need. Now let's actually get into the weeds on the technical feasibility of it. So it's, it's, it's right. It's not taking an invention and running around with an invention, looking at places to stick that invention. It's understanding, is there a need first? Now let's see if there's something that is worth inventing. And I can see that that would help protect you from getting or running away too early with a product. I don't want to be too disparaging, but I just think when I think of that, someone should have told Segway that. Remember the big hype. It mm -hmm. is coming. Mm -hmm. It is coming. And then what was it? That was it. And it stayed in mall security and vacation rental areas. Yes, urban tourism. And it didn't really go anywhere yeah. else. But, but where is the walking car? So there is uh, some real technical feasibility issues with that at scale. It's the scaling issue. <coughs> so we presented that first, and there were seven well-defined use cases that we outlined in that first project. And that got funding to go on to the next project. We actually then partnered with the University of Michigan's RAM Lab to do some assessment analysis. And we did an entire conceptual design with hydraulics. Mm -hmm. Because about six, seven years ago, when we first started this project, hydraulics were the only thing that could scale to the size of a four to six passenger vehicle. Electric actuators just don't have enough torque at the size and weight, because you end up kind of with the elephant effect. You know, the scale thickness of an elephant's legs is exponential to the weight of the body. And same thing with these electric motors. When we started to identify, okay, I have to move a 4,000 pound vehicle and you want to have six joints in that, well, each of those joints just becomes heavier. And all of a sudden you have this, you know, engineered mathematical model where you're trying to pick up a 600 pound foot. Well, that doesn't really work well, right? So hydraulics seemed to be the only option. So we did a full conceptual design with hydraulics, and we used um, some simulators to say, how fast could I get over a five-foot wall? Could I get over a five-foot wall? And if it took that hydraulic system five minutes, well, this is ridiculous. Nobody's going to use that. Like, nobody's going to have the patience to get over that wall in five minutes. And after we ran through our, our virtual simulations, we were able to identify a system that would work and get us over that wall in 24 seconds. So that was funding round number two. Presented that, oh, you could get over a five-foot wall in 24 seconds? That seems pretty valuable. Somebody might need to do that in a search and rescue scenario or um, uh, getting stranded, X, Y, Z. So, so we now had some technical ways to execute it. And while that was going on, and this happens all the time in our work, something else got invented. Some other company came up with a new invent innovation and we took everything we had learned and now we started looking at electric actuators. And there have been huge improvements in electric actuators and higher torque, uh, lighter weight motors. So then we did a round two and this was what was debuted at CES 2019 was the concept and it was called Elevate. And uh, that was still where I was designing the vehicle, got the, the awesome opportunity to sketch it out and then build the CAD model and turn it into a prototype. We had our, our robotic engineers at Sunberg for our uh, actually build a scale robot. So it was a car chassis, um, eighth scale with robotic legs. We programmed it and walked it across stage at CES. And it was really cool because we got really into the biomimicry. So animals with four legs walk either like a mammal or a reptile. And they're very actually different based on their hip joint starting uh, axis. And so we said, okay, well, okay, there's benefits for both. Why would you walk like a mammal? It's efficient. Why do animals uh, walk with a horizontal or vertical hip joint? And if you look at some that walk like a reptile, reptilian or, or insect-like, they have great lateral stability. So we actually created an articulating hip joint that allowed you to go into both positions. So we thought that was awesome and revolutionary. We actually demonstrated it walking uh, as a reptile. 
And so we presented that and um, through that project 2019, then it turned into, okay, well, let's build a better, higher fidelity scale model. And then we did another version and that was debuted. Oh, we hit the pandemic in 2020. I think it came out that spring, right? And, um, and it was called the uh, Tiger. And uh, it had a, it was an acronym, um, but it was, a, it was a smaller scale. So now it wasn't going to carry people, but we actually built then a robotic delivery vehicle with a detachable chassis from an electric body. And that chassis could be picked up by a drone. And now you're getting into the ability to drop off a vehicle. So that's about of the, of the table we're sitting at here, you know, three feet in length. And it's fully charged. And now you could deliver medical to supplies to a team. We talked to fire support in California. And if that vehicle could have equipment for the firefighters, be able to walk around, climb over debris, and if you had 20 of them out there, one of the most difficult things they have in fire rescue or firefighting is that satellite imagery actually gets blocked by the smoke coverage. Mm -hmm. So they, they use just boots on the ground eyes to report in and get more accurate readings on their mathematical models. So they were, they were like, if you had 20 of these supporting a crew out there and it could be actually spotting to the foot location where that fire was spreading and then we could augment that with the data we're getting from the satellite that's being blocked by the clouds they were just really into that so that gave hyundai some more interest in like okay there's some real value to these smaller scale versions and that that kind of gave them some of the confidence to you know i don't know if you saw they made an acquisition of boston dynamics so hyundai purchased boston dynamics right after that project um so yeah was, that's that's been one of the bigger I can't believe I'm working on a real life transformer <laughs> projects that, that we've had uh, um, because it's, you know, I've, I got to work in a car design studio and doing, you know, cars that are on the road and, and that's great. But this was like sci-fi almost, but we really turned it into a real project.